Former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley is running for president. <laughs> Haley, who served as ambassador to the U.N. under President Trump, is set to formally announce her 2024 bid in Charleston, South Carolina, two weeks from today. Joe Concha joins us now. Joe, I think a lot of people saw this coming, but what did you, what did you think about this when you heard it? I think I wasn't surprised. Yeah. Right? Uh, she's, she's already run for president once. She has a great resume when you look at it. Successful governor of South Carolina, very successful ambassador to the UN. She has gravitas. She doesn't make many errors. She's very disciplined. All that said, this is a big uphill climb for Nikki Haley because she already has her former boss, who already announced a couple of months ago, who has a, a core base that will never leave him, it seems. Then you have another governor in Ron DeSantis, who is climbing in the polls and is getting more national recognition and is seen as a very formal opponent to President Trump. Then you have Mike Pompeo, who also fills that foreign policy lane as a former Secretary of State. Then you have Mike Pence, the former Vice President, and who knows who else runs. The question is, can she stand out from all those folks to get to the nomination? The good news for her is there's more than 350 days until the first votes are cast in Iowa. Here's what Haley thinks about all this. Listen. Ooh, when you're looking at a run for president, you look at two things. You first look at, does the current situation push for new leadership? The second question is, am I that person that could be that new leader? That yes, we need to go in a new direction. And can I be that leader? Yes, I think I can be that leader. Joe, she has famously said she has never lost a race. Does that streak continue? It's interesting. Maybe. I'm out of the predictions <laughs> business. That, that I've learned because you remember, before the 2008 election, you know who the front runners were two years ahead of the election? Jeb? Uh, no, uh, 2008 would be Rudy Giuliani. Rudy Giuliani. Oh. Right? And then, to your point, in 2014, two years ahead of that election, it was Jeb Bush. So to make any predictions now, I don't know. I do know that if she does fall short here, that when you're looking at vice presidential possibilities, Nikki Haley will probably be at the top of the list. Interesting. I just wonder if, because she's a woman, she'll have more of an advantage, too. Interesting. You know, because she does stand out in that, in that aspect. That's right. You don't hear of any other women thinking yeah. of running right now outside of maybe Christy Noem, the, uh, the, right. the governor of South Carolina. That could be Another a good one, yeah. 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 Watch that battle. In the meantime, Bill Maher slammed by the left for being too right-wing <laughs> after CNN announced his post-show segment, Overtime. Leftist and Young Turks host. Can you say his name? Cenk. Cenk. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, Cenk. Claimed that Amar was a culture <laughs> warrior for the political right, while MSNBC's, can you say this guy's name too? No, I don't care to, actually. Uh, the guy from MSNBC, time. Mehdi Hassan, depicted Maher as a racist. Joe, Bill Maher's a conservative, like, I'm the center for the Knicks. <laughs> what does that tell you about how far left the people are saying he's far right? Yeah. Are? Tough loss for the Knicks last night in overtime. I'm just silly enough to stay up to, to watch that and do this show. I know. I was on the court. It was tough. Yeah. Oh, you were? I know exactly. You're, you're, you're the center. Uh, look, <laughs> Bill Maher is seen as being too far right by the folks you just mentioned because he doesn't toe the party line like the folks you just mentioned, right? He's unpredictable. You ever see Howard Stern's private parts? <clears throat> and there's one scene where the marketing guy who's played by, uh, I'm sorry, the um, program director, he's played by uh, Giamatti, right? And, and he hates Stern. And he's like, I don't understand why he's number one. What's going on here? So then a marketing guy comes in and says, okay, the average Stern listener listens for an hour and a half who likes him. And reason why, I want to hear what he has to say next. And then Giamatti says, well, what about the people who hate Stern? He goes, well, that's very interesting. They listen for three and a half hours. Yeah. Most common answer given, I want to hear what he's going to say next. Bill Maher, by being unpredictable and taking on the woke left, makes him unpredictable, and therefore you want to hear what he's going to have yeah. to say next. Yeah, it did take a lot to do what he has done, and good for him. But I, I have to get to this, because this is my favorite topic of all of the topics with you, Joe. I heard. Senator Bernie Sanders has an upcoming speaking event for his new book, and it's called It's Okay to Be Angry About Capitalism. And to make sure you're angry enough, <laughs> tickets cost $95. Okay, the first thing I thought was this reminds me of AOC when she tried to sell those shirts, but she was bashing capitalism. Right. But I hate to break it to him, that's exactly what this is. This is from the shut the front door files, <laughs> right? I mean, here There's you have- There's a shirt. <laughs> oh, there it is, look at that, good job. Uh, Bernie Sanders is a multi-millionaire and he's charging nearly $100 per ticket to come see him to sell a book that will go for nearly $30, and he's doing so on evil Ticketmaster. Think about this <laughs> oh for gosh. a moment. So he is embracing capitalism in all of its forms, but this is the same Bernie Sanders who used to fly private to, to campaign events. Uh, this is the same Bernie Sanders who owns multiple homes, right? So yeah. I believe capitalism's been pretty good to Bernie, especially for those gloves he wore at the inauguration. Joe, does anyone on the left care about the hypocrisy that they peddle? 
well, if we're judging them by their actions, never, ever, particularly as it came to COVID and masking everywhere, and then they're, they're out partying and not masking. So I think that was the biggest example of rules for the, not for D's, oh. uh, as a Democrat. Yes, that's my little thing. But I mean, my, my, my biggest question, the people who support people like Bernie and AOC, do they not see what they're doing? Do they not get it? I think they think that because Bernie and AOC represent a bigger cause, then they can break the rules. Got it. You know? Okay. That makes total sense. Yeah. Clear as mud. <laughs> Clear as mud. Instead of spending the money for Bernie's book and the AOC shirt, go out and get my Knicks jersey. Again, <laughs> as the center of the Knicks. Exactly. Number four. Number four. As in the time you start But number one in your day. hearts. Uh, thank you, Knicks. <laughs> Joe. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.